Dun, 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 dun. This is gonna be a spoiler review. So if you haven't seen it, here I'll give you a couple couple of seconds. Please get out of here. Go watch it, come back, and just um yeah. Leave. Welcome everyone, the Mandalorian season two, episode one. Now I watched this episode two days ago, but, you know, work happens, homework happens, and I'm finally to this review. First off, I just want to say this episode, I loved it. I liked it a lot. But yeah, so we first start out, Mando, we're picked off where he's looking for other Mandalorians. Because if we remember at the end of season one, they all died or they disappeared. I don't know. I got to rewatch season one. I'm thinking they all disappeared and took their mask off because they're... Like she said, um, the welder, the welder warrior lady, uh, the Mandalorian welder warrior lady. Our secrecy is our, um, kind of our, our edge in the universe. No one knows what we look like. No one knows who we are under the mask. He goes to this planet to get intel from a, some guy, I don't know. And right off the bat, you're not feeling these, she, you kind of like, Man, I, don't, I don't trust this guy. I can get those vibes. It's a dark planet. It's kind of this underground fight club thing. The Mando's there to find information about where other Mandalorians are. But he crosses them because he wants the Baskin armor. The Baskin armor. That's what he wants. And he says, hey, give me that armor. I'm going to blow your brains out. And then they all... And then you're just like, how is he going to get out of this? Insert of his hand. And it's like, it was dope, it was tight. And even before that, we had Baby Yoda close his little, um, what would you call it? His little, his hatch of his uh, floating crib. And he just closed it because he knew danger or battle was going to come. And he wants to stay out of the crossfire. So he closes it. Mandalorian kills all the guys. Then he chases the main boss outside. Hooked up to like a street light. The boss guy gives information to the Mandalorian. He tells him that. The only other Mandalorian I know lives on Tatooine. Haha, <laughs> hence where we started from the very first movie. Fun to be back. So we go to Tatooine. Once we arrive to Tatooine, we encounter that mechanical lady with the droid scene as in, in, in Phantom Menace. Now she has a line that she says, Thank the Force! <laughs> but it's basically saying, Thank the Lord! <laughs> it is hilarious. I was dying. We're headed to Mas Largo. He goes into this cantina. And then uh, the sheriff, who's wearing, surprise, surprise, Bobo Fett armor, comes in. And he's like, where did you get that armor? You know, I have this. Basically, the Mandalorian, you know, our main character, wants that armor. And the sheriff of, the ta of this village in Mas Largo, who's wearing this armor, proposes that, hey, you know, I'll give you this armor, it's rightfully your, yours and your guys's, but I've helped this village, I've defended this village with this armor, help this village out and destroy the trouble that keeps coming to this village and hurting lives, destroying lives, you know, food, water, all the good stuff. He agrees. A problem arises when uh, the Mandalorian and the sheriff of this town they want to kill this uh, sandworm, giant sandworm. They need help, not only from the Tusken Raiders, but also the villagers. Who knew the Mandalorian can speak um, <laughs> Tusken? <laughs> I don't know. There's, just, there's a scene where the Tusken Raiders and the Mandalorian are... <laughs> and they're talking to each other. It's pretty funny. We also learned that uh, the Tusken Raiders haven't been so kind to this village. They raided, they raided the village before. I'm sure they probably stole their food, stole their, you know, who knows. Basically, they have confrontations with them before, and they have tension with them. Heated tension, heated conflict. After the Mandalorian and the Sheriff have talked with the Tusken Raiders, they now know that they, hey, the, the Tusken Raiders also want this sandworm thing dead. And 
you know, they can use it for however many resources, whatever they need, food, water, who knows? Who knows what they're going to do with it? So the Mandalorian and the sheriff go back to the village and explain to the villagers that, hey, the Tusken Raiders propose um, peace between the village and the Raiders if, you know, we can work together to kill the sandworm that we both have a problem with that's both destroying, you know, livestock, crops, food, water, and, you know, all the good stuff, the goods. That brings us to this conclusion of this, this final battle with the Tusken Raiders, the Villagers, the Mandalorian. Now for the ultimate big surprise at the end. Yes, we all know it, Boba Fett. I'm not sure how to feel about this because we've seen a lot of things from the this new trilogy kind of bring things from the old and the prequel and kind of mess with the epicness or the 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 value or the, the gravity of these characters or these events for example the death stars we had another death star it got destroyed the han solo movie it well it didn't flop but it flopped for a star wars movie just certain ideas certain concepts and it's like ah oh, we're bringing boba fett back where i have hope because you know, it's not Kathleen Kennedy and, well, I guess she is a part of it, but, you know, it's not Ryan Johnson. It's not J.J. Abrams. It's Dave Filoni and John Favreau. That's just my take and my personal opinion, bringing back the character Boba Fett. It is fun. It's it's interesting that he's, he's also a clone from the Clone Wars. And so just seeing that character, you know, you think of Rex, you think of the... Um, what is it, the 501 unit? I don't know, I just kind of get excited when I see him or when I see his face. There's so many questions went through my mind, you know, how did he survive? I don't know, did he trade his armor in exchange for the Jawas to save his life? Why would he give his armor away like that? You know, why has he just been on Tatooine? Wouldn't he go back to bounty hunting? Why didn't Boba Fett interact with the Mandalorian? I know this video is coming out late compared to, you know, all the big channels and everything like that, but Overall, I really love uh, this series so far. I love season one. I thought it was great. It was, it was definitely what Star Wars needed. It's just a franchise to get this newer group of audiences who didn't grow up with the prequels or the original trilogy. And it, it piques their interest. And so they can enjoy Star Wars in their own way. While also maybe revisiting the prequels and the original trilogies. Thank you guys for tuning in. You know, comment, share your opinions. I know I'm, I missed a ton. Hopefully you subscribe and uh, I hope this can be a weekly thing. Overall, I give this review as an out of an episode a 9.5 out of 10. Well, I guess you could round to 10. So it's a 10. That Boba Fett really knocked it off. But it also brought up a lot of questions and, and mystery. I'm glad for that reason that they did that. You know, it gives people something to talk about and something new to share with our friends, especially during this hard time, during the pandemic. And then, you know, we have this uh, divisive presidential election. So, uh, but yeah, thanks for tuning in watching this video. And you guys have a great day.